Hello, everybody. This is Laudalino Martinez at Martinez Gallery. And today I'm interviewing Connor Holton, who is primarily a uh, landscape pain painter. He lives in Brunswick, New York, close to Troy, where the gallery is. He's also someone who enjoys um, um, doing plein air painting which he will describe uh, later on, and uh, has a background that uh, makes him a much broader individual than just uh, one who puts uh, paint on canvas. So we'll talk a little bit, not a great deal, but a little bit about that, I hope. Uh, how are you today, Connor? Good, Lalina. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Um, so what happens when it gets cold in the Adirondacks, which is usually your hunting grounds for now, uh, yes. images? What, what do you do? Well, I have a, a stock of photos that I take. I, I work always from a combination of uh, plein air and photos and sketches, drawings. So I, I do a lot of those all summer or all season, which lasts from about April till October. Uh, so for those who are not that um, aware of what plein air means, what does it mean? Literally uh, in, in, in the air, in plein air. Um, it's a French term, the Impressionists are usually considered the plein air painters that began the, the movement, but of course they're, they've been, people have been doing it before the French. Uh, it's gotten to be quite a, a movement now, and lots of lots of people take it up. Uh, I've been doing it for about 20 years off and on. Uh, it's actually the way I learned to paint landscape. I started out just uh, painting in the studios, but uh, just got outside and it it, uh, it gives you everything you, you want. It gives you the uh, things you, a camera can't, and it gives you a really immediate experience. The thing is to try to capture it because the cameras are very... Uh, difficult, they, they distort and they uh, don't really represent the best uh, of what you're getting. So you need to combine uh, a so photograph. How do you capture the light? How do you capture the light as it changes? Yes. Because I'm assuming that the, the light is one of the things that you like about being outdoors, but it changes throughout the day. So what do you do about that? <laughs> That's, it is a problem. Uh, I, I belong to some plein air groups and we, we paint together. Sometimes we paint in, in part of events or I paint alone. Uh, you paint fast um, and uh, you must paint very, very quickly. Sometimes uh, you have to compromise and that's what I do. It depends what I'm doing. Uh, I can show you some paintings that I did just one shot and that's ideal. But, but basically what I like to do is paint over the course of two days if possible. And then I, you just compensate. You, you, you take a light, a shadow that you like and you freeze it. And that's what, what you're gonna go with from then on. But ideally I would paint outside for two days and then go in a studio and work and polish it some more. But sometimes it's just, you get it right the first time. A, a good painter- and you paint do. usually close to the road or to a walkway or do you have to like, uh, do you ever go like deep into the woods to paint? And what do you do about all the baggage that you bring with you? <laughs> right. uh, I try to paint in where it's quiet and private. Uh, I, I find always spots that are on, on a stream bed. I like the sound of water. I, I never go near cars, although many people do. Uh, I know some very good painters who don't mind the traffic or, or being in a town. Actually, you could, you could be in a city. I used to paint in Troy. Uh, but I prefer to be in the woods or by, by a lake and just somewhere where it's quiet, it's, it's very peaceful and meditative. So how did you fare with a pandemic? Were you able to get out there? Did it feel the same or was it different to, to paint outdoors? Well, I, I thought about that question quite a, quite a bit. I, I, it's the same on, on one hand, and on the other hand, um, it makes you very grateful you realize what a, what a gift it is. And, and an art is a, you know, it's a gift to begin with. And it really accentuates your feeling of gratitude to be able to be outside and, and how important nature is. And it really it confirmed me more than ever that uh, I'm a landscape painter, I paint nature. I'm looking for things in nature 
Uh, I want to show people and myself how alive it is, all of it. And in, in a pandemic, um, when so many people are cooped up or limited in different ways, I think it's more important than ever. And not, not to mention that beyond the pandemic and the time of uh, climate change, I think for people to understand that we're living in a, in a, a vibrant world that's much bigger than us, uh, but to understand it would really, uh, I think, help the cause. Did you feel a sense of urgency about doing some of your work? Did you feel that there was something you discovered in your work that wasn't there before? I think I, I did uh, intensify my studies and thought more about where, the directions I want to go. Uh, I have uh, basically I'm, I'm pushing values more. I'm trying to make things more, more come alive more in three dimensions. And to do that, you need to have a, a value change from dark to light. And and also, so I've been studying that. Uh, I go to workshops sometimes to, st to study that. And that so that's been a significant change. It's how to simplify and uh, really draw out the contrast, which makes the whole painting come alive, or at least hope to. <laughs> So when you look at your paintings and, uh, or at a painting you've been doing um, and you sense, okay, this is ready. What does it mean that it is ready? What does it mean also that you feel that it is now um, ready for others to see? Right. Um. I always sit back for a while and, and I just let it sit for a while because pa paintings change as they dry and you, can, you can't be sure you can have a, a beautiful painting when it's wet and then you discover that actually it wasn't as good as you thought or it, it, the paint didn't dry evenly. There are lots of little things that you need to improve. I, I tend to then uh, at, the end, at the end of a painting, I, I do uh, out, outlining in some sense. I'm, I'm trying to find the, the curves and the movement within a painting. To, to make it come alive. When I feel like I've, when I've done that, when I, when I feel like I've got a, a, some sort of representation of a living uh, image, uh, I don't know, it, it's alive. I mean, I'm always open to suggestions and I, I do change things. In fact, I'm looking at going back to some paintings I did. Uh, you can't see them on the, on the wall above me. I, I, I look at it and I look at it and I think, well, that was a year ago and I didn't not understand something. Now I could go back and put that in. And I, I will do that. So show us from one of the paintings you have on the back, something about looking for the curve, looking for the movement in your painting. Okay. Um, if you, and, and let me ask you also, when you were talking about when it is wet, uh, do you paint mostly in oil? Uh, only in oil, yes. Only in oil, okay. Yep. So it takes, um, a little while for it to dry right. and really ex yep. show itself to you. And, and then I may, you know, after six months, maybe I'll varnish it. It, it depends. Yeah. Uh, I like to let the, the paint speak for itself, but sometimes varnishing and oiling it up will help uh, really get it to glow. So, so do you I'd... varnish all your paintings or do you let some go without varnishing? I let some go if, if I think they have enough, uh, you know, sparkle to them. Uh, it's mostly a, a question of whether the painting, the paint has dried evenly. Sometimes different paints are opaque, transparent. They may dry, and and you could see that it's it's just something you can cover it. You can make uniform and really really glow as opposed to a flat part of the painting. Right. Uh, I could show you. I thought two paintings in particular that um, that really uh, mean something to what I'm doing now and where I'm trying to go. So this one. Let's see if you can. So, okay. So this is, it's one of the few paintings I've done that is all plein air. So I did this in two to three hours. So the light was wow. pretty consistent. Um, Do you mind happens. bringing it forward to the, um, sure. the camera? Yep. No. Great. So that is shelving rock, which is on Lake George. Right. It's a, it's a motif I've painted many, many times. Uh, it's across from Bolton Landing, uh, and it's sort of my Mont Saint Victoire, if you 
you know, the Cezanne painted over and over. Why well, I, I do that with this place? Place, but I think I've been. I was trying to do a certain kind of approach. I was using um, basically earth pigments, primarily earth pigments, which uh, are very uh, luscious, but they're thin, and I paint them with. You see, there are the brush marks. So uh, you can put it back and then talk to us about it, if that is okay. That's um, a sky. That really is a sky. Yeah, um, and that was the sky. You know, it felt alive. You know, I'm I'm always looking for ideas of, and I, I think a lot about um, mythology and and uh, Native American uh, stories about uh, the spiritual inhabitants of the land, and I, I can you can I feel it in the sky and the water. And uh, the skies over Lake George are, are vivid. They change. They're very. Uh, they can be cloudy, clear, wild, sunny, bright, dark. Um, so I did that very quickly, and it just all works. Another time, that would be. You know, it doesn't. And that's the the danger of painting fast. Uh, uh, it, it teaches you a lot, but you also can be quite prone to screw up <laughs> and and uh, have to go back in or adjust it later. So at the other extreme, I think I did a little drawing underneath of that painting. At the other side uh, is what I did uh, in the last month, which was this one, I guess you can see, mm -hmm. which is um, it's a painting. Um, but you already framed it. So yes. you, you feel like that one is <laughs> yeah. totally done. Yeah, I, I do. I, I look at it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure because I was doing what I wanted to do there too, but it took a lot longer. I, I, I was out at, at that site in um, the Berkshires for, excuse me, two days, looking at it, drawing it, photographing it. And then I went in and then I did a, I went into the studio and I painted an underpainting uh, with uh, some earth color tones. So it, I, I actually drew the painting and toned it. And then the next day I went back in and, and one day I painted it all. And I did what I've been trying to do, which is uh, have simple three. There are three values there, uh, basically with lots of sub values within each value. And uh, the water is uh, just simple, but it's also it's a different paint. I'm using I use uh, lead white sometimes, which uh, it's actually it's, it's not being used much anymore, but it has a very soft glow to it. Let's do the same. I'll bring it over to close to the camera so that we can take a look at it. A closer look at it. Right. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. yes. That's great. Okay. So, you know, I, I've mentioned to you that um, I like the fact that when you do uh, landscapes, you're not um, just photographing the landscape uh, with uh, paint, you know, you're you're not just um, rendering a faithful depiction of what might might be represented, <laughs> right. but that underneath it there are some elements of abstraction that I yeah. feel, you know, that in some way you're making reference to larger things than just that particular tree or that particular bird. And uh, you've agreed with me. Do you still feel that? Absolutely. And that, that actually encouraged me in my ways. So, uh, so I, I think very much about the abstraction. I think many painters do. They, if you look at most paintings close up, they disintegrate into some, some form of abstraction. But I, I really try to emphasize it because um, I, I'm very drawn to, and I, I got most of my uh, mental uh, instruction from uh, studying Cezanne. Now, if you study Cezanne, it's it is uh, squares and it's it's uh, shapes, circles, and cylinders, and uh, things that vibrate because of it, and uh, they're it's very indeterminate at the same time. And I, I like that quality. I think it, I'm looking at. I'm not trying to to, to represent a, a photograph photographic representation of nature. I'm trying to make it feel like it's alive. And I think you have to do that with abstraction. Right. Do uh, I I I agree, and and I'm I'm wondering to what degree um, your other life as a publisher, as a person who's been involved in science, 
um, to what degree does that uh, uh, influence the work that you do in painting? Um, are you someone who is aware of those other uh, types of knowledge that you have, those skills? Um, are you in, are you, are you using some of that when you're painting or is that totally subconscious or unconscious? Different side of the brain. Uh, I think I use it and that's what uh, sort of helped me a lot to get interested in, in art or stay interested since I was always interested, but I found a path into it uh, through science and color. I mean, I, I was involved in a magazine that covered um, optics and lasers, but the optic side is, is color. Uh, and, and or, or one aspect of it. And so the more you understand about color, the more interesting it becomes uh, and the more con confusing it becomes in a sense and more infinite in, the, in, uh, in our appreciation. But uh, I was very interested in the, uh, as well, the, the materials. I, I study paint, uh, what's in the paint, you know, how is it, how is it made, what different kinds of paints, the history of the paint. So all those come together with us. That's the sort of the scientific engineering background uh, that I acquired over a number of years in the in, in publishing. And it, it seems it's an to intellectual just component to that, an intellectual component. Yes, right. To that. Yes. And uh, uh, and I'm assuming that because you've done this other kind of work, the scientific work and publishing work, uh, there's part of you that. Uh, likes to see what the mind uses, not just uh, not just the uh, uh, the right. expression or the emotion. Yes, uh, very much. I, I like to. I, I know that that there's so much uh, optical illusion out there, and it, and somewhat even in, term, in terms of physics, the world is what you create or what you imagine and what you see, uh, how the eye works. There's so many variables, and it's. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to play with and to explore. Right. Um, I think I see something in your publishing. Um, I think it may have given you a sense of um, um, uh, composition that is um, um, very modern. It's like a modern sensibility on how you approach a space and what it is that you're going to paint in that space. Um, and I think that that, I don't know, I speculate that perhaps some of that might come from your publishing background. Do you see anything like that? Uh, I do, I, I think it helps me understand it. I, that, that's, I guess you would say is the, the modernist world anyway. I mean, the painters have been moving in this direction for a long time and it's, it's a flat field. And, and the questions of how you create the illusions of space or not. Um, I mean, not just Cezanne, Matisse, uh, many of the modern painters ever since. It's a very narrow field and they, they do a lot of play with color. I'm, uh, I still have a fairly deep field uh, of view. You know, the, the dark drives your eye to the back and the light brings, you know, the field is, tends to be toward you when you're looking at it. But uh, I really like to play with the depth of field which is, uh, that's one of the, the lessons of modernism, I think. Um, I, I knew a, um, an artist, a Mexican uh, artist, who's, um, uh, who went through a period when he would try to uh, invoke almost every uh, theory of color in the <laughs> Renaissance in uh -huh. different paintings. And, um, and it was, you know, there were luscious, but then there was also this intellectual quality to, mm -hmm. to that project that he had. And I have a feeling that perhaps there's an intellectual quality to your project as well, you know, in doing, in doing landscapes. Um, tell me now, is there someone that you, besides the sun and the impressionist and so on, is there someone you admire who actually might be quite different from uh, your own, an artist who does something quite different from what you do? Right. I, I was thinking about that in uh, 
earlier today. Um, well, I've got a, I've got a list of, of people oh, that influence me. <laughs> about, you you know, about about two. <laughs> two, okay. Well, I, I would go with uh, one abstract and one quasi. And uh, Joan Mitchell has had a, a big impact on me, her, her abstract uh, paintings of nature. You know, the flowers and so on. She's a, a tremendous painter, and you, you just have to spend a lot of time looking at her, at her works. They're huge. Um, I've seen many of them in California, and uh, some great books out lately. So we have Joan Mitchell on one side with with her uh, sort of second generation. They call it unfairly uh, abstract expressionism, and then Richard Diebenkorn, um, a California painter who does large and small, but it, he's vac vacillated between abstract and uh, figurative work, landscape, and then back to abstract. And he's always searching for a way to look in, in large, simple fields. So those are the two that I would, if I have two, that's who I choose. Well, I admire that you actually name them. You know, so there are some artists who will not tell you who they admire because mm. they uh, think that it is uh, sort of uh, not being uh, in, immensely supportive of their own work. Mm. So uh, being able to, uh, to find uh, uh, elements in other artists, I think um, is something that speaks, uh, that speaks well for, for an artist, you know. Uh, it goes beyond just what you create, but it's also uh, admiring other people's work as right. well. Um, we just uh, recently began um, working with you, and by we, I mean the Martinez Gallery. Uh, and I'm really very happy that uh, you uh, are showing in our latest uh, exhibition, which is called Benedictus. We have a couple of your uh, pieces hanging here in the gallery. And the rest of the pieces are online. I, we've been doing more and more these hybrid uh, exhibitions with some works here, some works online. And I encourage anybody who's listening to this, um, um, to this interview that they go and, and look at the rest of your work because it is very exciting and valuable work. Uh, Thank you. And, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, we'll continue showing your work. So tell me now what projects you have, if any. Uh, what are you thinking of? What are you trying? I know you, you spoke something about values. You spoke something about uh, those pieces. But is there anything um, else that you're kind of thinking of? Well, I... I've been uh, pondering that a lot because the weather's gotten colder and, and what to do over the winter, how to, how to focus. And I've, I have many, many photographs that I use and I, I only paint from my own photographs or you, with a few exceptions. Uh, so I must have been there and, and felt, felt the wind. Uh, one, one project that I have in mind is uh, I've painted, I go out at dawn quite often with dogs. We, we have, there's a wetland at the end of our property and I, I'm down there with the dogs. But I've got a camera and the sun's up, sun's coming up and it's a spectacular color. It's dark. The land is dark. The sky is lit up. And uh, so I've, I painted one already like that for spring. I've, done, I've got beautiful pictures of summer and fall. And I'll do the I'll take a photograph in the winter solstice with the, uh, the, the sun of the seasons, but also the, the contrast between the color and the and the atmosphere and the water reflecting it and the land, which is usually so dark. That really intrigues me. Yeah, I I like I like your depiction of water. Um, it it um, it speaks to me. Really, thank you so much for uh, um, joining me in this um, uh, interview today. I hope we can do this again and great. take a look at what else comes uh, from your studio and. Um, um, I don't know if there's if there are any wise words that you want to leave us with. <laughs> I, I was wondering, but I, I did have one which was uh, I was looking for you know, some simple philosophy statements of of art, and there's I came across Louise uh, Bourgeois, 
uh, the sculptor and painter, and, and she just said, thank you. Thank you very much. That's my philosophy. And I, I like great. that uh, gratitude. That's what we should, can do. Feel. That's a great one. Well, thank you very much. All right. We'll be, lot, uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Okay. And uh, let me give um, our viewers our um, website address, which is www.martinezgallery.org. And you can find all the uh, um, online exhibitions there, uh, including Benedictus, in which uh, Connor Holden is uh, exhibiting certain works. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, thanks.